is black and white fine art photography for you? Well today in this video we're going to find out. I'll be taking a couple of images in long exposure of this amazing landscape behind me and I'm sure I'm going to get you hooked. So, are you bored of taking the same style photos over and over again? You know, the same old postcard color images? I guess they're okay for when you go on holiday with your family. Well, I think you need a change. Otherwise, you would have not clicked on that thumbnail. Well, this is what I'm offering you in exchange to watching this video till the very end. An easy step tutorial on creating fine art images in black and white. We will be using Lightroom and a tiny bit of Photoshop. I promise you no fancy editing techniques that other tutorials ask you to follow. So let's dive into it and get editing. So here we are in Lightroom. I've already done applied the denoise because it was quite dark when I took this image. Clouds started to build up. And the first thing I always do is I go to the Adobe profile and switch it to landscape. My aim is to increase the colors before turning it into black and white. Next I check my histogram we have some clippings here and we're going to adjust the exposure panel here. I'm going to reduce the highlights, increase slightly the shadow, check for clipping by holding down the Alt key on the windows and moving the, the white slider button to the right. When you see clippings, dial it down a bit, do the same for the blacks. Okay, our histogram is spread out evenly. Maybe I'll just increase slightly the exposure. I should do it. A bit of contrast, not too much. Slight texture, make it pop a bit, a bit of clarity, and I apply some dehaze. Should be okay. I do not touch the vibrance and saturation. What I do, I go down to the calibration tab here and I move the blue primary saturation to the right and like that we'll be naturally increasing the colors don't worry if it looks over colored that's our aim it's okay Next, I'm going to slide down to the sharpening. I reduce the radius below 1. I increase the detail to around 80. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to move the mask in slider. And it will show you what's in white will be sharpened. Our aim is to sharpen the foreground and not the clouds and the sea. That should be okay. I'm going to increase the sharpening up to 
around 55 okay around 60 should be okay we have some clippings up here don't worry about it seems okay if you want you can dial it down by moving down the white slider and there it is it's okay now and now from here I'm gonna take it over to Photoshop like I said we'll be using Photoshop just a tiny bit next move right click edit Adobe Photoshop now here's our image in Photoshop first thing I do here is make a, a duplicate of the background just move it down with the mouse on the plus sign and there's your copy next thing I'm gonna go down to this circle half black and half white the adjustments panel click on it go up to black and white we'll be turning it into black and white and there's our black and white I'm gonna play around with these sliders if you want move them up and down to see where it's effect, affecting that's why I told you to increase the colors in Lightroom so you can get more leverage I'm gonna increase it to there check the yellows dial it down a bit the greens affecting the left side bush there cyan's the sea should be okay there and now the blues And that should be okay check the magenta I'll leave that how it is close this panel and next go back down to the adjustments and click on gradient map you may be wondering why I bring it over to Photoshop to turn it into black and white I found that Lightroom and any other software, Adobe Camera Raw even, um, are not that accurate. In Photoshop, they're much more accurate and the adjustments are perfect. Next, we're going to go to this drop down window here, click on Classic, and now we're going to click on the gradient map. If yours is like this all you have to do well, is click on here because we need to get the blacks on the left side and the whites on the right side click on it and here we're going to swap them around the blacks on the left and the whites on the right and there we have a better image in black and white if you want you can move these sliders here to increase more the whites or to increase more the blacks I think I'm gonna increase slightly the whites you can move the middle slider as well That should be okay press ok here and we're going to close this window as well this is the gradient map 
Next, I'm going to flatten the image, go on these three dots here, or lines, whatever they are, and flatten the image. And here we're going to go back into Lightroom. Go up to the file here and click Save. Close Photoshop. And here we are in Lightroom. Now from here we're going to do some masking. We don't need to touch the exposure panel here. You can if you want. But our histogram seems okay here. So we're going to start turning it into black and white fine art now. So from Lightroom it was color into Photoshop. We turned it into black and white only and then brought it back into Lightroom to turn it into fine art. Click on the mask in here. First thing we're going to do is make a linear gradient for the sky. down to around there. Here you can see the mask has affected the right side of the image, these buildings here. If you get that, just go on these three dots here and click intersect mask with sky. And it will just select the sky and not these buildings here. It's detecting the sky. And there we have it. No mask on these buildings here. I'm going to reduce the exposure. Quite a bit. Okay. I'm going to create another mask. Another linear gradient. And again for the sky. Not too much though, we don't need to go down that much. And again, reduce the exposure. That should do it. I'll increase it just a bit. Okay, next I'm going to do another linear gradient, but now for the foreground. Follow my steps and you'll get a perfect black and white fine art image. Decrease the exposure as well. That should be okay. I'm going to use another linear gradient for the foreground again. Not too much, just like we've done in the sky. Another tip, if you hold down the up arrow, and move the mask, you get a perfect straight line on your mask. That should be okay, and I'm going to decrease the exposure just like that, and that's enough. Next, I'm going to do another mask, and we're going to use a radial gradient. I use this a lot in creating fine art. By the way, this uh, long exposure was uh, 2 minutes, 120 seconds. And I'm going to place the radial gradient on the brightest part of the image, which is the sky. Always draw the viewer's eye into the image, which will be the brightest part the eye naturally goes to the brightest part of the image. That's why I created a top darker to make the top darker and to make the bottom darker which will draw the image 
the viewer into the center of the image, the brighter part. And here I'm going to increase just slightly the exposure. That should be okay. I'm going to do another mask and another radial gradient. And here we'll be creating a vignette. A natural vignette. Place it where you feel it's good, where it's right. Should be okay. And we're going to invert the vignette, the mask. I'll open it up a bit more. Feathering is around 100. And here I'm going to reduce the exposure. Not too much, just around 20. And that should be okay. Now here I'm going to use another radial gradient. And I'll be placing it over some bright parts of the sea, like here. And here, like this, we're going to make the image pop a bit. Increase the exposure. Should be okay. Another radial gradient for this side now. Like that. Extend it a bit. The aim here is to try and make it look as natural as possible. And here, it should be okay. And now I want to brighten parts of the rocks here so we get that 3D effect by doing some dodging and burning. I'll be using the brush here. Increase the brush size by opening the bracket buttons and I'm going to place it around here, around here, this part as well, where you feel the light will hit the rocks. Over here on the bushes just the top parts like that on this part of the sea here maybe on these rocks over here I will be creating like a 3d effect And a bit over here as well. If you go overboard with the mask, just use the subtract button and you can erase where you went overboard. And here I'm going to increase the exposure just a tiny bit. Don't go too much because it looks really weird. Reduce it until you see it's natural. Should be okay. Hit the eyeball here to see the before and after. And that should be okay. I'm going to use another brush. I'm seeing here is just a bit too dark. 
and here as well and I'm going to increase the shadows that should be okay as well I'm going to use another brush and I'm going to do a bit over here and I'm going to increase the exposure again should be okay I'm going to use another radial gradient just for the foreground I want here as well should be okay increase the exposure that should be okay go out of the masking step back a bit and check your image for me it looks perfect what I'm going to do the last step is create another vignette but now I'm going to place it over the brightest part of the image where the sun was rising which is somewhere around here should be okay like this Invert it, the vignette. I'm going to open the mask up a bit more. And that should be okay. And there we have our image. What I'm going to do, just slightly increase the exposure, the last touch. And there we have it. Perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed the editing and I hope you're going to get hooked on black and white. It's something different. I find it very relaxing. It's good for the eye even to make perfect color images by using black and white your color images will turn out much much better well thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like thumbs up see you guys and watch my other videos if you have any comments leave them below and thank you and see you in another video. Make sure to stay till the end of the video to see the final image and you will see the big difference on the screen. Thank you and see ya.